YouTubers, this is Zach with Vintage Diecast Restoration. I'm back this week with a Tool Time episode. I haven't done one of these for a while, and I, uh, I had a whole bunch of models that uh, I've been finishing up. Uh, I've been using my airbrushes quite a bit, and uh, as you can see, they've gotten pretty gunked up. They're, they're really dirty, and I thought, you know what, this would be a really good video to shoot uh, for a Tool Time episode. Just how to clean an airbrush. Um, so the airbrush set that I use is, it's not a, a fancy one, not even really a top of the line set. It was very affordable. Um, I think I got it for like a hundred or, or less than a hundred, 150 bucks um, on Amazon. I bought a kit that came with uh, two different airbrushes uh, as well as some, you know, tools and things to get started and a compressor. And I have a link down in the description uh, where I get all of my tools. And the link for the airbrush set that I bought is down there. Um, but I wanted to uh, kind of go step by step because as much great stuff as was in the kit, uh, there wasn't really anything to go over how to clean your airbrushes out. Um, and so for those of you that are getting started doing restorations or getting started in the hobby um, or just airbrushing in general, I thought, you know, this would be really good to go through uh, pretty quickly here. So step one, um, I've got this cup. In inside the cup, I've got some straight uh, lacquer thinner, and uh, it's really good, works well. I, I use the Tester's enamel paints, and the lacquer thinner in those will just about dissolve uh, any, any kind of enamel paint. So uh, step one is really just to take them apart and get all of my pieces uh, soaking in that lacquer thinner. Now, when you remove the needles, the, that's uh, the piece right here that I'm working on. Um, the needles are held in usually with a, a, a spring type apparatus. Uh, that's what kind of springs back and forth when you're pulling. You want to be really careful with this needle. Uh, we don't want to damage the tip, bend it, anything that's going to cause it not to fit and our fluid not to, uh, not to flow well out of them. But uh, for step one, uh, we want to take apart all the easy stuff, the stuff that just, you know, unthreads, comes apart, and get it all soaking in the lacquer thinner. Now, I'm going to use a few different tools for this. Uh, I've got a couple of my wire brushes, both a steel and a brass bristle brush, and I've got some of my uh, quad aught steel wool. Now, for these, uh, the needle parts here, I find that the steel wool is really all I need. Um, after I've done a little soak in them, uh, a quick once over with the steel wool will shine up that surface, remove any of the paint, anything that's crusted to it. Um, little things like the buttons here, you know, I, I've got those little grooves. They've got a little bit of paint in them around the hinge has a little bit of paint. It's really more of a cosmetic issue than anything, but I found that if I don't uh, keep up on stuff like that, then that becomes a, a spot that builds up slowly over time. So. Uh, while I got them apart and I'm doing the soak and the brush, I really want to make sure even the cosmetic stuff on the outside that I, I get all of that. Um, I'm using the brass brush here because I don't want to hurt any of the chrome that is on the outside. That's kind of what protects the airbrush. Uh, the, the paint doesn't stick real well to it. Uh, so I don't want to hurt the finish of that. So staying with that brass bristle brush, um, that softer metal uh, should keep me from damaging or scratching up the surface of my airbrush. Now, down in the bottom of the cup there, you'll see I've got a little bit of paint, and inside of the hole where the needle goes, I've, I've got a fair amount of paint. So I ordered this little uh, airbrush cleaning kit. So it comes with uh, a couple different things. You can see these sort of bristle brushes. Um, it's got various sizes of uh, just kind of twisted rods and then most importantly this little tool here you see the the sharp needle end on that that is to clean out the very tip of the airbrush so uh, we'll take that out and that little reamer tool uh, will help me get all the paint out of that so to remove that tip uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it um, it is threaded in there and uh, sometimes when you buy your airbrushes you'll you'll get with it a little wrench, a little uh, kind of mini uh, screwdriver type thing that will fit the tip of your airbrush exactly. 
Uh, if you don't have one of those, or if you got a cheap airbrush that didn't come with one, uh, you can use just a pair of needle nose. Um, but you do, these things are really tiny. You do want to uh, be very careful when you're taking it out. Um, it's easy to drop them like I did. So if we look at the tip here, you'll also notice there's a little rubber gasket around the outside. And I don't want to lose that. I want to make sure that I leave that on there. And to clean out the paint from the inside, it, it's really uh, pretty simple. I'm just using this reamer tool very gently rotating it around uh, with a little gentle pressure um, just to make sure that I can get all of the paint out of the inside of that little tip. Um, it doesn't take much, uh, but it, this little tool sure makes it easy. If you don't have one, I have no idea how you would ever clean one of these tips. Um, so to clean out the rest of this, I'm going to try first one of these little brushes and they come in various sizes you want to make sure you use a size that's appropriate for your tool um, and you can see just shoving that up in there uh, how i've already pushed a lot of that dried paint everything that was stuck up inside that little uh, little tube that little tunnel on the inside um, gotten all of that loose but when i put a little bit of the lacquer thinner in the cup it's not flowing out so i know i still have some paint and gunk up inside of there. Um, so I'm going to keep working this brush kind of back and forth with a little bit of the lacquer thinner in the airbrush cup. And hopefully, if I can get it all out, you'll see that that lacquer thinner will just flow freely through there. So now I know I've got all the gunk on the inside of there all cleaned out um, and that when I get ready to reassemble this, um, a majority of those big chunks should be gone. I'm not concerned about getting the every last bit of rev, uh, residue in there. I want to get as much of it as I can, make sure, you know, while I've got it apart, I get it really good and clean. Um, I also want to work it from the other direction because sometimes that paint can backflow up towards your little valve and it gums up the works in there. It, it'll affect your airflow, it'll affect uh, how fine you can tune when you start pulling back to allow some of that paint to flow. Um, so I want to get most everything out that I can. The last bit here uh, that I've found just works really well is a Q-tip. Um, it, it seems, you know, about the right size to get kind of down in the lower part of the cup and get to uh, all those last little remnants of paint. So I got a little lacquer thinner down in there, just kind of working that back and forth to dissolve and knock loose any little remnants of paint that I've got in there and make sure that everything flows free. Once we've got everything cleaned out, the last step is just to put it all back together. So you kept track of your little tip. Uh, those just thread back in. And as you can see, <laughs> It's kind of fiddly, and my big fat fingers don't always work the best on uh, tiny little stuff like this. But I think there we go. Now you want to make sure that the very end of that, um, where the the little O-ring is, you want to make sure that that is slid all the way back. Uh, it tends to kind of pop out on the ends of the thread and then it makes it difficult for those threads to catch and go back in. So I think that was my issue there. So we'll thread that back in. You want to be careful too that you don't over tighten it. Um, you want to get it just kind of to, um, you know, tight enough. It's, it's not under a lot of pressure. It's not going to come out or anything. Um, and so just be be careful with it. Uh, it's very easy to break a lot of these pieces or cross thread it. Um, so, and I, you see there, I almost forgot. Uh, it's really good to kind of work in an order um, to make sure that you undo everything the same uh, same order of operations that you uh, put it back as well. So, the little push button, it's got a plunger that goes down, uh, touches on the air valve, and it's spring-loaded, so you want to hold it down a little bit. And you'll notice that in the middle of that plunger, there's a slot. 
and through that slot is where we want to feed the needle portion of the airbrush. Now the little tab uh, that presses up against the plunger, you kind of have to angle it to get it down in there. And you want to make sure that it's straight up and down, uh, that that little tab on the top of it uh, fits in that open slot on the top of the airbrush housing and make sure it's all lined up. Now, when you tighten it back, um, I always have to kind of do a test where I'll pull on it um, to see how far back my needle's going. I don't mess with the adjustment on my needle, which is the, the rear knob on that whole needle assembly. Um, so I basically just have to put it back in uh, the same amount that it was when I took it out. It shouldn't probably be tightened all the way down. Uh, you get it too tight, you'll go to pull back and nothing will happen. And that needle won't pull back far enough to get any of the uh, paint to flow through. So you don't want to put it in too far um, or it's not going to work correctly. Then the last little bit, uh, you see I had just some fingerprints and stuff. Uh, probably some residue from the thinner. Um, on the outside so just a quick uh, once over with my steel wool to knock some of that off and a clean paper towel to shine it all up then uh, the last little bit is the the nose cone I don't know what exactly it's called I've always called them uh, just the nose cone because that's kind of what it looks like um, it's the uh, the threaded end that kind of directs the airflow and you can see uh, the ones that I had were pretty caked up with a couple different layers of paint. And so uh, there's two things I want to make sure. One, I want to make sure that that hole is clear. Um, and these little uh, twisted rods, they, they work pretty well to knock all the gunk and everything out of there. Uh, and you can see I start with a pretty small one and work my way up to a larger and larger. Eventually I'm going to get to one of these that doesn't fit through because um, it's too big for the hole but uh, I can still use that to kind of ream out. And then once I make sure my hole is clear, then I want to use uh, the brushes. And you can see I'm kind of threading that through there and then uh, twisting it so that I can uh, work against some of that gunk that's in there. And then my last bit, uh, going back to the Q-tip, just because it's such a perfect tool to get down in some of these areas. Um, I do want to make sure, you know, go back, soak it in a little more of the lacquer thinner. Make sure that uh, you got enough uh, of the thinner in there to knock loose everything. Um, no reason to, to work extra hard, you know, mechanically to scrub at it uh, when just a little soak in the thinner will take most of it off. And then the last bit, you can see the outside. Some of those little uh, knurled edges on there uh, can get paint stuck up in them. And uh, I think that's going to be easier to take care of after I get this put back together. But it just threads on, and then I'll go over it once with my brass bristled brush here just to knock some of that buildup in those threads out. So pretty straightforward process on getting most of it cleaned. Um, the only thing I really have left here is the lids, and I've had those soaking in the cup. Um, this is really straightforward, but the most important thing is that little hole, the little hole in the, the center, um, it can actually get a lot of paint gunked up in there, and uh, that is a pressure relief hole. So as the, the fluid inside drops, that allows a little bit of air to get in to that, uh, that cup that holds the paint. Um, and when that gets gunked up, it'll actually create a little bit of suction in there. Not a lot, but enough that it will affect how your paint is flowing. Um, so after we get everything cleaned off, I still want to make sure that that little hole is cleared out. And I go back to the, the little reamer tool because it's just about the right size and the only uh, thing small enough to fit through that and knock out any of the, the remaining paint. So, like I said, it's fairly straightforward, but if you've never worked with an airbrush or had to tear one down to clean it, um, then you know I thought this might be helpful to go through. I've got another one of these to do, uh, so we're gonna do all the same steps. I'm gonna pull the tip here uh, and go through and clean it up. 